The F-35 is arguably one of the most technologically advanced aircraft currently flying in the skies today. But unfortunately, with more technology and greater performance, the human becomes more and more the weak point in the system. Now, let's be clear, I'm not advocating for UAVs or drones. I say always have a pilot in the aircraft, definitely. But many pilots and aircraft have been lost either due to distraction, disorientation or incapacitation. And particularly the latter, because as you may know, aircraft have various alerts and warnings that will go on to warn the pilot. But if he's incapacitated, say for instance hypoxia, or if you've watched the recent Top Gun 2 movie, a G-induced loss of consciousness, he won't be able to respond. So the end is inevitable. Or is it? Hey guys, Chris here, CG Aviator, back in the cockpit of the F-35 and later the F-14. And in this video, I'll be demonstrating the life-saving automated systems that are currently in service with the F-16s and F-35s. And if you stick around after that, I'll also demonstrate some of the other techniques and systems that will keep pilots safe. Lots to cover. Let's dive in. So here we are north of Newcastle in the UK and we'll simulate that Top Gun 2 clip before we actually show you the real things, the real HUD footage. And whilst I can't black out in the sim, I will just simulate it by banking the aircraft up, pulling some G and then just relaxing the controls, letting the aircraft fly itself. And you probably guess what's going to happen, but I'll explain the nuances of it afterwards. So the view from outside, you can see the aircraft coming down, getting very close to the ground. I'm not flying it, but it rolls wings level, gets very close, probably 50 or 60 feet, and then flies away from the ground. But let's rewind that and take a look from another viewpoint. So this system is known as Auto GCAS, or Ground Collision Avoidance System. It has its system altitude, GPS position, vector of the aircraft, and a database of the terrain, as well as a setting by the pilot for its minimum height. And if it thinks it'll infringe it, it'll alert the pilot. And if he doesn't take the proper action, the aircraft will recover itself to a nose up attitude giving the pilot time to take back control. Very cool. But it is a flight sim and there are limitations. So if you want to set it up yourself, top right of the main screen, you can see GCAS, you can click on that and set it to auto. But if you want it to act like a real F-35, you need a much bigger computer and a much higher security clearance. But it won't rescue you in the simulator if you're uh, above around about 400, 450 knots more than 90 degrees angular bank and more than 30 degrees nose down. That's kind of the limitation. If you go above that, ain't nothing gonna save you. Oh, that's uncomfortable. <laughs> and I paused it there. So here's the real deal. HUD footage from an F-16. Pilots lost uh, consciousness briefly. 55 degrees nose down through 9,000 feet. And this is the aircraft flying itself up. Bottoms out just below 3,000 feet and saves the day. They call knock it off and I guess they head on home with a change of pants required. So for the next couple of techniques we'll go old school. This is the F-14 by Indy Fox Teco Heat Blur and we're down at low level and of course the simplest way of not hitting the ground is looking out for it and just flying away from it. But that sounds easier than it is because you've got a lot of systems to monitor, you've got to navigate, you've got to do some weapon stuff probably so it takes a while to get into a solid work cycle that allows you to look out of the window 98% or more of the time. Uh, you might have to do navigation, you'll be setting up weapons, all that stuff is really important. Early days for training, a good technique is if you need to look in the cockpit, you ease up away from the ground to give yourself some buffer. But you never put your head in the cockpit for more than a second at most, really. So you have to break up your checks. Now, if you're dodging SAM sites, then you'll stay down low, but you'll be more experienced at breaking up your checks and managing the systems. Next, we're going to jump up above this cloud layer and I'll teach you how we get down beneath it. There's a fair few techniques, but we'll stay in the F-14 because look at that. It looks bloody brilliant. A very dangerous period of flight is when you descend below a low cloud layer over the sea and that's what I'm going to demonstrate now still in the F-14 and any excuse to jump outside I will take because look at how nice that model looks. Gotta love an F-14 but you can see the sea down beneath me. So the two things we'll look at is use of air traffic control and the radar altimeter. Now we can use our barrow altimeter, that's the one where you set the regional pressure setting or local Q&H 
and that will give you a height above mean sea level and because we're over the sea it should be fairly accurate and you can see the altimeter there to the left of it is the radar altimeter and this shows your height in feet above ground or sea level whatever's beneath you but importantly gives you this carrot uh, the white thing moving around the outside now which is your minimum height setting and if the white needle goes lower than your minimum you'll get an audio alert so if I click that it gives you the test and that's the alarm that you get but important to remember that the radar only sees the ground beneath you it won't see the mountain ahead of you nor will it lock onto the ground at greater than about 60 degrees angle of bank depending on the aircraft type and if you have an under fuselage tank it might block the radar and it won't work but before we descend we'll use air traffic and we can plan ahead using their minimum vector chart so these heights are what the uh, what air traffic would use in order to lower you down to the base of their radar cover so they can monitor your descent make sure you stay safe from obstacles now over the sea if you want to dig into it ra2307 uh, the rules of the air for military aviators that tells you about safety altitudes over the ground and over the sea over the sea it's about a thousand feet so we could just let ourselves down to about a thousand feet but it's always good practice to get an air traffic uh, service not that I'll do that here because it's pretty tricky to replicate in the sim so let's dive on down nice I'd also focus a lot on the altimeter until you get below 5,000 feet so in this case my height above mean sea level and my rad out will match roughly because they're all set up properly as we get down to a thousand feet on the barrow altimeter I'll then transfer over to the radar and the technique we used on the tornado every time you're less than a thousand feet over the sea you will announce every hundred feet below a thousand feet as you descend and that is because it's so difficult to tell visually your height above a calm sea especially and you can see in these hazy conditions that it's nigh on impossible to pick up any references so that's why I focus down on the radar to make sure I know how high I am I mean look at that it is just fraught with danger descending over the sea so we're now getting to about a thousand feet on the altimeter about 50 feet to 100 feet lower on the rad out so at this point I'll be calling out the rad out heights so that I uh, just keep good SA on that and then once you're established at low level really important to monitor your flight vector because if you get distracted with checks and you look in cockpit that nose could drop and then all of a sudden you're getting closer to the ground but of course you can have the rad out warning set to alert you if you do go lower than you intend to like that now that we're here at 500 feet i can reset the carrot down to my absolute minimum and then continue down time to step back into some high techness if that's even a word here we are medium level i mean look at that f-35 model by india fox Teco, of course and now we're going to talk about the auto recover which is a genius switch and i believe from cockpit photos it is in the real aircraft and i think other aircraft have it as well in the form of a level button but here we go we're going to bank hard into the cloud maybe we're defending against the sam system yes i know we're stealth but just play along with me and now we're in cloud pulling hard it's really easy to get disorientated i mean that head could be any which way up if I'm not sure, I'll hit this switch, and then similar to the Auto GCAS, it will right itself wings level and then pitch to a slight climb. Really important that throughout this is to monitor altitude. We'll have our safety altitude, so if we go below that, it means we're unsafe with regards to how close we're getting to the ground. And if you don't recover by the safety altitude and it's out of control, then you're likely to have to pull the handle. But you can see how nice this switch is. Excuse that flow popping up. Really good get out of jail free card all oh, right culmination of everything here we are low level in the f-35 we're going to do a simulated attack profile which is where we're going to pop up do a loft attack with some paveway fours i guess i don't know if they do that in the f-35 but tornado experience is my go-to and you can see the weather is pretty rubbish like a bit of bad weather it makes things interesting but uh, yeah we'll open the bombay door you can see that auto g cas it's difficult to fly with it in this sim because it does go off a little bit soon but look at that view from the Bombay. Very cool. Uh, so I do need to keep my flight vector above the horizon a little bit, otherwise the Auto GCAS kicks it. Hey ho. Right, up we go. So I'm going to simulate this attack with a 30 degrees nose up. I'll get to about two, two and a half thousand feet. I'll simulate the bombs are gone, overbank, and try and get back down to low level. Now I used to do this a lot in the tornado. We'd then re-engage TFR and it descend back to low level. Very scary stuff. 
Uh, but in here, you can see if I close the bomb bay, get distracted in cockpit, it'd be difficult, or should I say easy, to lose track of where I am. Now I could see the ground coming up a little bit early, so I could probably recover myself, but the aircraft's doing it for me. Uh, squeaky bun moment, probably about 64 feet bottomed out. Uh, and we're back safe and sound cruising along. But really, really cool to have this in the flight sim. As I say, I think this is the first time this has been incorporated into a flight sim. Correct me if I'm wrong, put it in the comments below as well as any questions you might have, I'm happy to answer. But that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Till the next time, take care, fly safe.